Hey everyone, this is Justin Pate from the Rep Institute and I'm introducing a super cool technique that I just came up with recently and I call it the circle of wrinkles and it works really, really good on back bumpers. And in fact, I'm actually gonna wrap this entire back bumper all the way to the edge without even touching my heat gun. Super cool. How am I gonna do that? Is really kind of understanding kind of the logic of wrapping now for me has changed. Uh, back in March, I came up with the idea of what I call feeding the mouth, all right? And so that changed the way I approach cars and I have lots of videos where I talk about it on the Rep Institute. And all of a sudden, yeah, I was teaching a workshop in Melbourne in November 2019, and I was showing the class how to wrap a back bumper, and then all of a sudden I was like, you know what? This section right here is a giant mouth. It's like a giant, super hungry mouth. Super steep sections, you wanna go all the way in one piece. How do you do it? And for years on the Rep Institute, I showed different techniques. I even said sometimes, if you're working with a stiff material, wrap this in two pieces, it's safer. Okay, and the reason why I did that is because back in the day when I started wrapping bumpers and stuff like that, I would tack it here, and I'd do my triangle technique. I'd have one person holding the back bumper and we'd stretch it and do the triangles. Why was I doing the triangles here is because I didn't want the material to bunch up on the corners, which, is, which worked. So for years and years on the Rap Institute and the workshops, I spread the tension out, work the material around, lock it in on the 50-50 point, and then start wrapping the bumper. The problem is, once you stretch it here, if you stretch it away from the mouth, okay, and you do those triangles, this area here is already stretched out, it's maxed. So if you try to push it into this area, it generally overstretches, and if you're a wrapper, you know what I'm talking about. It maybe whitens, you feel the tenseness on the material and you take it in there and oftentimes it pops, okay? So if you start at the 50-50 point with bumpers and do the triangle technique, it's great for the corners, but it's bad for the mouth. Hmm. So this technique that I came up with, the circle of wrinkles, solves that. So how, the, how it works is, and I'll just kind of explain it before we start, is right here, we'll start here in the middle, but instead of pulling 50-50, we're gonna tweak the material up in here, like 30-70. Once we get to this point, instead of busting out the triangles, we're actually gonna hook the bottom corner. Then we're gonna hook the outside corner. Then we're gonna hook the top corner. And by doing that, what happens? All the wrinkles build up here, which you think is actually bad, but it's not because we're gonna take those wrinkles and we're going to feed them out. Cool, okay? So you have to think about it like a four course meal. We're gonna feed an appetizer, get an entree, dessert, maybe some cheese, pork, okay? So let's get to it. All right, so I'm gonna help, be helped by Mr. John Sherman. We're gonna take the backing paper off. And again, you don't need someone helping you for too long with this technique on the bumper, which is pretty cool. Taking the backing paper off, and generally you wanna still use cast. You can maybe use calendar with this technique, but I think cast is best. Take the backing paper off. Always slide it immediately under the car for safekeeping, okay? And simply right at this point, just make sure it fits left to right, top to bottom. You good? Cool, okay? So I'm actually gonna remove the backing paper for a second. Drop it back here, and this is where it gets interesting, where you really have to pay attention right now. Read the wrinkles. What is the material saying? Lots of tension building up on both corners. So, huge tension here. But right here, not much tension, okay? It's already kind of maxed out, but this is the area that wants the most material. Hmm. So right here, I'm gonna anchor it here, lock it right into place, and we're gonna rock and roll. So John's gonna get over there, and it, it already starts at the beginning. So this is the appetizer, okay? The appetizer is this. Instead of uh, pulling super hard right now and pulling at a 50-50 angle, John barely pulling, and I'm pulling, I'm actually pulling this way. I kind of tweak my pulls. So I'm gonna tweak my pull to here, and I tweak my pull to here, and I'm just trying to create enough glass on this middle section that it doesn't get any wrinkles there. So I tack it in here, and right now, okay, if I look at the material, I feel like it's good enough where I can tack it to here, lock it in place, cool, awesome. So now this section here already has a little bit of material, so I fed it an appetizer. But here's where it gets interesting, okay? So right here, okay, instead of spreading the material out and worrying about both corners, John is just gonna pull around, and I'm gonna pull around, and we're actually just gonna lock in, in this case, just a little bit to the bottom corner here. Check. So before I go to the next section, I'm gonna squeeze you this down. Nice and easy, cool. So now here, the bottom corner's done, but you can already see what's building up here. The material's shifting up here, which is not bad. So I'm gonna take John's place. And now here, the tension's building up, and I'm gonna take that tension to this back corner. So I take the material to this back corner, and now I don't have any tension on the corner, which is great, right? Except for here. Now I'm getting more material bunching up here. Hmm, watch this. I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna take the material and I'm gonna scoop 
this corner here. Instead of pulling this way though, I pulled this way. So what happened? Look at that, okay? Huge wrinkles, but is this a bad thing? No. So I'm gonna come back here, pick the material up, give the material a little shimmy right to here, and I'm actually gonna pull all this material, okay? And I'm pulling actually quite hard. Here, instead of just pulling a little bit now, I'm pulling a lot. So I take it back here, I give it a little bit of shimmy right to here, and I pull very aggressive into this area. I lock it in on the high side, let it transition here, and again, if this light was off, this would be even easier. I'm pulling super hard. I lock it in the ridge right here, and I'm gonna squeegee right to here. Cool. What I like about it is no adhesive lines already, right to here. So all those wrinkles from the corners, this is why I call it the circle of wrinkles, circles the wrinkles, and the wrinkles come back right to here, I lock it on the ridge, and now look how hungry, the, this, uh, this is now fed. This is like your entree. Look at that material, pretty cool stuff. So we'll just switch it over here and we'll do this as close to real time as possible. So again, 30, 70, not pulling too hard, just enough. Give it a little bit of appetizer. Cool, cool, and cool, okay? Lock it into the body line right to there. Lock it in onto the car. Soft squeegee is awesome right there. And again, instead of grabbing the heat gun right now, I'm gonna do the circle of wrinkles. So take the material and focus right on this bottom corner. And again, if this bumper even didn't have molding, we could do the same logic. Lock it in here, right to here. Now I switch. So if I was doing this with another installer, I just need to have them help me with the first corner. I lock it to here. Then I come over here, lock it to here. So now again, all the wrinkles build up here. I turn around. Pick up the material, lock it to here so it doesn't shift. And again, this is not a bad thing. This is a good thing, because I'm gonna take the material, shift it, shake it, do the shimmy. The shimmy comes in very handy right here. And then once I get to this point now, I'm gonna pull very hard, create my glass, lock it in on the top so now it doesn't move. And now I can take my soft squeegee and Oh, take my shot squeegee. And then lock it in nice and clean. Okay, so I got the wrinkles out, fed it back to here, and cool. So now that this is all fed right to this top point now, okay, now look at this section. Look how saggy it is. I'm already, look at this. I'm pretty much already wrapped the back bumper. Tons of material right there. Now, okay, and again, it would be awesome if this light was out, but it not. I'm gonna make a relief cut high here, cut the material back a little bit, round it so it doesn't split, and do the same thing over here. Come over here, round it so it doesn't split, round the corner, and we're good. So now the top parts are set. So now let's take the material deep. Cool, all right? So now, gave it the entree, and now let's give it another course. Okay, so treat it like a hobbit. Cool. So you wanna give it lots of meals. So right here now, okay, got tons of material building up. So I'm gonna actually Cut it back just a little bit. Give it a U shape. Don't need all this material. Cool. Excess material right here. Bam. And ready to rock and roll. All this material is not a bad thing. It's a good thing. So watch. I'm going to change my position. Round this top corner here. Pick this material up now. And now this is where it gets fun. Cool. Look at that. Right here. All this material right here. I can start to work the material down and make it as flat as possible. And I'm gonna get super minimal adhesive lines here because there's no tension on the film. Look how far I can take it now into the deepest part of the bumper. Super easy. Come here, lock it down, spread the material out, keep it low and flat to the surface, lock it into this section here, pick it up one more time, take it up to the top, and bam. So come over here again, and Feed it down into here. Right here, I can now, once I'm into the deepest part, lock it into the upper corner. And cool. Now this is done. I come back over here and take it to here. I don't want to bridge this section here. So I run my hand, form it, get it close. And then right when I get to here, I can feed it to the deepest part of the recessed area and lock it in. Cool. So now this is done. Rock and roll. So once this is set, I can shift over here. Once I'm here, round the material, pull it into the gap, 
feed the material up. And again, some of you might be saying, well, this is a certain material that's soft and the workspace temperature is warm. This is really good. If this was a different film and is a little stiffer, I could do the exact same thing, but I would just have to add a little heat when I brought it into the mouth for the first time. Okay, so I want some to here. Unfortunately, got a little piece of dirt right to there. Pick that off. And again, this is just technique right now. Feed it into here. Lock it down into this section here. Feed the material up and look how easily the farther I go into this bumper, it's the weirdest thing with this technique of circled, you know, wrink circle wrinkles, is the farther I go into the bumper now, the easier the material shifts into it. Awesome. Okay. So one time to here. Cool. Get this little bubble out right there. So pick it up for that. Awesome. Cool. And the last place I squeegee is here. So I get the material close, no adhesive lines. Life is great. Get the material in close right to here. And again, I'm going to feed it into this gap. I'm not going to bridge and jam it in. I take it and I feed it in right to here. Feed it in right back. Feed it back and back. And cool. So no tension here. And the last place I squeegee is this top ridge. So now I got a one piece color change bumper all the way to the edge. And I haven't once picked up my heat gun. And if I don't pick up my heat gun, that means I don't overstretch the material. There's no tension on the edge. Cool. And it's going to hold for the long term. And I've done this as close to real time as I can in the sense that, you know, trying to talk and demonstrate the technique. Once I get this down, life is great. Double check the edges for heat and good to go. Cool. Then I just cut everything off as normal. So again, the cutting system doesn't change. It's more the technique. And so again, this is a circle wrinkle. So if you've been doing 50-50 for years, which I have, throw it out the window when you get to the back bumper. Now you're going to do 30-70. And then here, you're actually going to do 0-100. And that's actually going to feed the mouth. So something that was very hungry is now very full because I fed it wrinkles. So again, changing the analogy of the way you see things. Again, I used to call this a scoop or the pocket. But now I call it the mouth because I changed the I see it as a mouth. Wow, I see it much differently and it works. Super cool. So I hope this helps you wrap back bumpers quicker, better, and faster, and in one piece. Thanks for watching. Justin Pate. Hey everyone, we're with Reiner Lords in Munich, Germany, and today, Reiner, we are going to talk about what? Solutions. Solutions for PPF or tint or both? Uh, both. For everything. I say mainly for PPF. Okay. Uh, it's more to understand what you can do and what the solutions can do for you. Interesting. Because I think one of the biggest things with PPF that I think people who are just getting a PPF or, or even if they've been in PPF for a while is getting that right solution. If you get the wrong solution, it's miserable. Yeah, definitely. So, and the people are long in PPF. So they have their own solution, own mixery, always the same way. Right. But sometimes they didn't understand what they do. It only works. Okay. And also, you know, what's also sometimes I see people like uh, gel works really good up into a certain temperature and then gel is not so good in hot and all kinds of stuff. So yeah. you really have to mix and match and actually kind of really adapt throughout the year. Yeah, definitely. Okay. So you mix your own solution for not only temperature. You yeah. have a different hood. You have a different object. You have a different bumper ah. and with a different temperature and say, okay, what solution you want to use? So you must mix it up and mix it in your way. Uh, yeah, so that's it. Let's get to it. So what do we got down here? Uh, so if I explain, here's only distilled water in. Okay. Uh, here we have uh, water with isopropyl alcohol. Yeah. Uh, here, here we have water with uh, ethanol alcohol. Okay. So these are different types of alcohol. They're more or less aggressive. To okay. the material. So which one, which one isopropyl alcohol is more aggressive than ethanol or the same? Uh, ISO is more aggressive, definitely. Okay. And for some uh, yeah, manufacturers, it's not so good to work with ISO because ISO work against PPF. Mm. Okay. So uh, it works, definitely. We work a long time with this stuff, but uh, maybe it's also good to work with this stuff. Okay. So ethanol, and then what are the other two right here? So here I make a mix uh, with uh, a slip solution. So this is now with uh, three mil Johnson Johnson baby shampoo okay. uh, in one liter. And now here, say we make an overdose. 
Okay. So okay. How much is this? Uh, we make a slip solution with 20 mil. Wow. Okay. Johnson Johnson baby shot. So standard standard would be three, and then this one's. Yeah, standard is three. Okay. And uh, but we see the difference. How much you use is your choice. You must be safe. Okay. That is, you do have a good work. You're responsible to do a good work. But uh, yeah, let's see what happens here. Okay. So I start with the distilled water. Okay. And I spray it on the front window just to see what the water, what tension the water ah, has. Okay. So what are, what are we looking for here? So you see how it rinsed down? Yeah. You see this dry spots here? Yeah. So it don't goes back. You know, when you apply here, PPF film, you press it down and it will stick ah, intermediately. Okay. So this, I say it's a light tech solution. Why not work only with water, distilled water? It's nice for the PPF. Ah. Uh, so uh, spray everything out. You don't need alcohol. So this is regular water. Works perfect as a tech solution. You see this tension. It's completely different right now what follows. So, so they basically, the, you know, a lot of installers on the edge and stuff like that, they use a mix of alcohol mm -hmm. and water. And you're just saying maybe it's actually just best used distilled water. That might be just as effective. Yeah, why not? Why not? It's softer. Ah, okay. It's softer. So now when we go to the alcohol, yeah. because we have this, we start right now with the ethanol okay. mix and I spray it down here. Mm. So smells good. <laughs> Well, it's much different though. I mean, this one's kind of beady and sitting, and this one actually is kind of more uniform. And it's got more uniform, but when I press down, so nothing will rinse back. So you see how it moves down here. Yeah. So it definitely have a different, uh, uh, say, uh, uh, tension. Yeah. And what the alcohol does, first thing, it goes in the glue. Ah. So. We know everything what we, uh, when we want to remove glue, right. uh, so apply alcohol, so yeah. glue will be softer. Okay. So every time when we use alcohol, the glue gets a little bit softer and more sticky. Ah. The next effect is with the alcohol, so it will disappear faster. Okay. Because the alcohol goes more in the air. Sure. So uh, with the tech solution, you definitely make the alcohol aggressive. Yep. And it goes away, and here you see the tension, it rinsed down. Mm. If I press here, say maybe here's a, a film, press here, so this goes, don't goes back, and you have the contact to the surface. Okay, so basically, you're, I mean, if you use alcohol in your tax solution, especially like ethanol or something like that, you're really committing, like you're not wanting to pick that back up, because that really yeah. will soften the adhesive, so it might yeah. affect silverine or kind of all that kind of stuff. Definitely, you're aggressive. Just for explaining, so it's a slip solution. Yeah. Afterwards, can so say slip solution is always nice. They're soap. Yeah. Okay, you make with the heads like oh soap is nice, yeah. Right. So the text solution is more like this. It's a punch. Right. Yeah. Okay. You don't want to punch the material. <laughs> yeah. You want to be nice to the material. Okay. You, you can, but it's not so nice. So this is isopropyl alcohol. So this is isopropyl alcohol and water. So when I spray this down here, it looks pretty the same. Yeah, runs the same. All the runs stuff. the same, all the runs the same down. It's a little bit different how fast it goes away, and you see from the side how it slides down. Yeah, no, I can see the fingers, yeah, for sure. Yeah, you have different fingers than here. Yeah, more looks fingers. Like, yeah, it looks like something from Alien. Yeah, more, more fingers means more alcohol, so it just disappears faster. Okay. So mix is a little bit harder. So what does that mean? So like if you had to say, you know, what is it? What are the primary difference between ethanol using ethanol and isopropyl alcohol? Um, it depends on the mixture. How okay. fast you go? If you go one to four with uh, ethanol, or uh, now here uh, 70, 30 percent, or go less. So it's your thing. How aggressive you want it? I don't want to go too high. Right. I don't want to go. I say for, for ISO, don't go over this mixture, for my opinion. Got it, got it. Uh, for this cause, Kevin, your brain, so alcohol, it's not so good for the glue. You stick something on. And there's some manufacturers though, who recommend ethanol over isopropyl alcohol. Yeah. So, so again, it just really depends. Every manufacturer has a slightly different adhesive as well. Definitely. Okay, Definitely. So they have different adhesive, it works different. For some PPF material, you don't even be allowed to use any alcohol. Ah. You're only allowed to use distilled water. Distilled water. So would you say it's a safe bet though if installers to use just distilled water or do you think alcohol has its place? 
Alcohol is definitely its place here. Yeah. So when I want to when I want to stick it over the corner or around, so I definitely warn. Or when I want to really with slip solution and tech solution, I want to have a tech here. It techs. Okay. So alcohol makes it aggressive. Takes down, squeegee down, stay in place, work for. It. Nice, cool. Okay. Now we get the slip solution. Now this is definitely obviously people are going to be using slip solutions a lot, so it's really yeah. important to get that right mix. Yeah. So what we do with the slip solution, we just break the surface energy. Okay. So that's all for the first thing. Right. So what we see now, spray it up and down. So now we have a closed area. Yeah, and if you can see this, okay, I mean, obviously you can see it, but it's like, this is a nice uniform area where all yeah. these, especially the distilled water was just droppy. And then, you know, the ethanol was somewhat, the isopropyl alcohol kind of stayed somewhat uniform, but this mm -hmm. is just a hundred percent just yummy. It's cool. Just stay down and what you want or what you do with the slip solution, you want to have this, I say, moisture between uh, the surface and the PPF and this moves around. Only when this is one line like here, right. it's one place. When I try to push it away, right. yeah, it's just close again. Right. Which so you nice. have a different surface floats back. So the, you know what's interesting. So the general rule of thumb within the industry is just enough soap, but not too much soap. Mm -hmm. But if you don't put enough soap, then it obviously becomes more like distilled water or stuff like that, because you are using distilled water at all times. Yeah. What happens if you use too much soap? Yeah, that's different. So if you use too much soap. I would definitely say, yeah, it's more slippery. But for my thing, I would definitely also say it sticks faster. Interesting. And that's what, you know, you, you know, Reiner and I talked earlier about this, and this is one of the reasons why we're making this video, because generally people think too much soap is a bad thing, but you're going to see right now, maybe it's... Okay. Yeah. So it's sprayed on. And it's definitely different to the other one. So it goes faster down. Yeah, because there's just more lubrication. More lubrication goes faster down, and I say the water is now thinner. Ah, so my, here you have the bubbles. Yeah, here also take solution. You have the bubbles like this. With the slip solution, you break the surface energy. It floats a little bit to the surface, and here with more, even more soap, so it gets even flatter. So when you push on the material, squeegee on and push, hold it a little bit, right. it will stick faster because you get more moisture, more water out from the surface. But then, you know, some people can argue, A, that's more soap. So, I mean, it makes a lot of sense, but the, th the water's thinner, the barrier's thinner, mm -hmm. so this means the adhesive is going to attack better. But then what would you say, maybe there's too much soap and it's going to leave a residue behind the film or bubbles? So this is about uh, squeegee out. You definitely must squeegee the stuff out. Okay. When you place here now, for example, gel yep. and wait till it's dry. What happens with the gel when it's dry? Did something stick on it? Mm. No, you have like powder, you have something like, so it's definitely not so really good. Yeah? Right. On the side, you must spray it out when you work with gel, the side spray it out that it gets sticky. Right. Work with this way. Yeah? So if you work with a slope solution like this, yeah, you will definitely spray it out the sides that it sticks on the side. Right. On the surface, when you press it down, yeah, so, you will go the, get the most moisture out with a really slip solution. Mm. So it sticks even faster, I would say. Interesting. So you're kind of going against the norm in the sense that in some ways maybe putting, you know, 20 mil soap and what, baby John, Johnson Johnson's your kind of rule of thumb. Yeah, Johnson Johnson's available uh, all over the world. So I go for this right now, not in Germany available. Okay. So we have different one. Uh, if you use soap or baby shampoo, uh, just use neutral stuff. Right. Not aggressive, so really neutral stuff, pH neutral. Sure. That's good. Uh, and always test it. Yeah. Also, only trust you. Test you, you as a professional. Test your style, test your slips, test your tech solution. Mm. If it really fits for you, if it's good, squeegee on. Is it good? Perfect. Just change a little bit. What I always, always do, just make the right mixture. Ah. I replace it. I use, use a surgery to say, okay, it's exactly the same. When they make a different solution, I must know it's not one drop, three drops, five drops. So I must really know, okay, now it's one mil, 1.5, two, or yeah. apply two extra. So uh, 
go straight forward for this. So again, try not to just stick in the, you know, the, the, the set routine of what people do slip solutions on. I think getting that mix and actually playing with more soap might be an interesting solution or actually playing with no alcohol, I think is an interesting solution. So mm -hmm. we've kind of run the whole gamut here. So I think it's interesting in terms of how you approach it, which is what makes you the mad scientist for uh, PPF, which is awesome. So, <laughs> cool. so thank, you for, thank you for taking the time, Ryan. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. In this video, you're going to see this Corvette mirror pretty much wrapped real time, and you're going to see it wrapped full coverage, including the inside portion where the mirror is essentially in one piece. So you can see lots of good techniques in terms of avoiding bunching up on the compound curve, but also how to feed the mouth. I'm really big into this technique now because it's really opened the door to how I approach cars and how deep I can take the material now without overstretching. So this is a perfect mirror to kind of showcase that kind of feeding the mouth logic. So because wrapping the entire mirror going deep, cleaning is really, really important. Just to make sure all the edges are 100% degreased so the material bonds for the long term. So obviously rotate it, get your squeegee in there, or in this case, finger in the microfiber towel and make sure everything is super, super clean, especially behind that mirror. We'd love to take off that mirror. And in some cases, maybe in a different video, we'll take that mirror out. But for today, it stays on. I'm gonna here use the pre-stretch technique. So this is a technique that started in Germany around 2008. So stretching the material 2D, so about 20 to 40 percent and now it's all about getting a good game plan i know the material is going to bunch up right there on the severe compound curve so because the material is going to bunch up i'm actually going to shift that tension away but by doing that i'm actually going to feed the mouth which is under there so that's actually the opposite of the compound curve so right here on the top the back side here there's lots of mouths on the inside so by working the compound curves now there's going to be lots of wrinkles in the middle but that actually is not a bad thing because those mouths right now are hungry for material. So we'll come back to that. But now I have a very good game plan of how the material wants to behave once I get it on the mirror. So once I get the material all cooled, ready to rock and roll, I'm gonna start at the 50-50 point, which in this case, because I'm wrapping the entire mirror, is right on this back section right now. And I wanna make sure that the tension stays nice and even, especially on this front section here. So I'm gonna pick it up nice and clean and make sure that I'm getting off to the right start. So I really wanna make sure that it's anchored in and once it's anchored in, I'm gonna make a basically like a U-type cut right here at the front. And this allows me to, to relax the material on either side. So that relief cut right there is very, very critical once I secure it to the 50-50 spot. Now here, I'm gonna spread the material out and you can see that there's a massive amount of wrinkles right there. But that generally is a bad thing. But in this case now, because I have the mouth technique, I wanna even out the material to kind of get it right on the body line. I lock it in. I see equal amount of wrinkles on top and bottom. They have the same shape. And because the wrinkles are the same top to bottom, that allows me to cut off the excess film and go to stage two now, which is now feeding the mouth. Because I pre-stretched it right now, I'm gonna shrink it back a little bit to relax the material. So right here, I trigger the memory, and I'm now gonna use the technique that I really love too, other than feeding the mouth. This was called the shimmy, because I do see some tension there. So before I go deep, because I'm under the mirror, I put on my headlamp so I can see nice and clean under there. Highly recommend headlamps right now. Trigger the memory one more time. You can see it shrink back, which is great. And all of those wrinkles that were on the corner now evened out. But even then, I'm gonna shimmy that material down and it kind of relaxes the material underneath. And look where I'm taking the material. I'm taking the material to the mouth. So by shifting the material away from the severe compound curve, it actually is a good thing because you can start to see wrinkles build up in that area where I'm focused right now. I trigger the memory again and see those wrinkles that were on the upper right, I pull them down to the bottom portion of the mirror, which has the shape of a mouth. So by doing so, I'm actually feeding an area that I normally used to stretch away from. So I used to work away from the corners and from the mouth, but now I work away from the corners to the mouth. So by kissing heat every time, I shrink it and then shimmy the material down. So see all those wrinkles right there? That's actually a good thing. If I didn't see wrinkles there, that means I'd be overstretching the film. But by picking the material up and I see this touching the base right now, I make a minor relief cut right there on the side. Then I can shimmy that material and continually to feed the material into that mouth-like section. So you can see me spreading the material out, getting it down nice and clean. And then once I feel like it's glassed enough, I squeeze it down. I've got a little wrinkle right there. So I'm going to trigger the memory effect, go back to zero and start again. So if you know the properties of the material, which in this case I can fix that wrinkle, but also feed the mouth and work away from the corners and do the 2D pre-stretch, I can start getting into these areas with very, very minimal stress. So it's all about just kind of creating glass with my free hand right now, spreading the material out, reading those wrinkles, and then locking onto the backside. So I, once I feel like I'm working in this easy transition right now, lock it in on that bottom portion by the uh, base right there, and then I'm gonna see some tension, spread the tension out, and continually feeding it towards that lower section. 
can see some tension in the film, so I'm going to come back and kiss it one more time, just a little bit. So I literally raised it just a few degrees, but by raising a few degrees as it relaxes the material just enough and triggers the memory so that I can take it to that underside with zero tension. So I did this very complicated compound curve basically by feeding the mouth and working away from that compound curve and triggering the memory as I went, making relief cuts as I needed, but safe ones. So very, very safe relief cuts. And now that I feel that it's on the main surface area, I lock it into the bottom edge. Once it's locked to the bottom edge now, I'm gonna transition now towards the inside portion. So obviously there's no way to wrap this entire mirror without having a baby little relief and overlap right there. So that's gonna go on the inside portion on the lower section of the mirror. So that's set up for the bottom area now. Now this cut is really critical to get right because the color of the car is really loud. I'm actually gonna cut on the opposite side. So technically this is a solid cut one. So by doing a solid cut one and cutting on the base side of the mirror, I'm gonna get about, in this case, about almost a eighth of an inch or a quarter inch of material that's gonna wrap around the underside here for full coverage. So I could have done a tuck and cut two there as well, but I just knew that by cutting on the opposite side, I'd get enough material to wrap around, which is great. So once I make that cut, I'm gonna make a little, one more cut right here just so I can transition to the other side. So this essentially was stage two. So I did stage one by doing the 50-50 point, locking it on the body line. Stage two was kind of feeding the mouth that was under the mirror right now. So once this section's done, I can, I can compartmentalize it now and finish this lower area here and then go to the next section. So the next section is gonna involve wrapping behind the back side of the mirror now. And to do that now, I just can really get rid of some excess material to make it easier to wrap. And once I get that excess material done, keep in mind that I'm not throwing it on the floor, keeping it on the car so my workspace looks professional, I can now rotate the mirror so it's much, much more comfortable. So I see a lot of wrinkles there, but right this lower section now, I'm gonna take advantage of the fact that I have that overlap at the bottom. So a lot of that tension that is on the top of the mirror now, I can transition towards the bottom. But before I do that now, I'm gonna cut the material away just so that I can hide that overlap at the right spot. So I'm gonna have that little bit of excess material here, and I cut it away nice and cleanly, trying to avoid cutting directly on the mirror as much as possible. Once I feel like the material is right to the point where I wanna make the hide that overlap cut, which is like on that lower kind of section right underneath, so it's not visual, I'm gonna tuck the material in just deep enough and then cut away a little bit of excess film. So now, when I come in with the top piece, I don't have to fight the excess film from the bottom area. So this is why I set this up before I kind of approach the top. So once that bottom area is cut nice and clean, and now I can start focusing on this top area. Now keep in mind that this material still has that pre-stretch tension in it. So I have to kind of make sure that I trigger that memory so that tension that's in the film doesn't come back to haunt me. So you know, that's the idea with pre-stretch now is I'm gonna pick it up, even out that tension, but notice that a lot of that tension I kind of shifted down to the left, right down to that bottom section. But even then you got some pretty sharp fingers right there. So what I wanna do is make sure I pick, I pick the material up nice and clean. And to do that now, because I have so much excess film, I'm gonna cut some away here so I can grab it easier. So try not to fight with too much material. And at the initial point of this pre-stretch, I needed that material, but as I get deeper into the mirror, cut it away so I can easily grab and then focus and read the wrinkles. I'm paying attention to the tension right now, giving it a little bit of a shimmy right now just to kind of relax the material. But you see by just kind of shaking it, kind of shifting that tension down to the left right now, those fingers got a lot less severe. So they're kind of, they're still severe, but not as sharp. And that's all about kind of shifting that tension and taking advantage of, you know, kind of knowing where to sh take the tension, which in this case is on the backside. Material folding on itself just a little bit right there, so I separate it. And now that I feel like the wrinkles are in a good shape right now, I'm gonna now trigger the memory and take the tension away. So I pick the material up, my free hand is not pulling right now, it's just holding the material away and you can see the material just almost sigh right there. And because it sighs now, I can do a little bit of the shimmy, take it right to the edge and then start to pull that material down and to the left. So pulling it away from the kind of front portion right there and you can see that the material is well under 10 percent because i got that still perfect matte finish right now and once that's set i can squeegee it onto the mirror nice and clean so only squeegee when you have 100 percent glass double check for bubbles and now everything's set locked and loaded and now once the top is done i can transition to this back side here trigger the memory you can see the material just relax and shift right now because the memory just relaxed and now i can take it to this back side kind of do that shimmy technique spread the material out shift it back and forth and now you can really see it watch by doing the shimmy it just hits that edge with almost zero tension you can just feel it in the film so that shimmy technique is really nice the temptation right there is just to grab the material and just stretch it to the corner but by relaxing it kind of just you know shaking it back and forth it really gets that nice relax in the film same cut on the bottom as before on the underside here so cutting on the opposite side so you get that nice good clean wraparound 
Once that cut is made, you can rotate the mirror now and finish the inside portion. So here you want to cut the excess material away right on the overlap. Now, obviously, because I'm using matte film, I prepped the surface a little bit with alcohol to raise the surface energy of the matte film. And now I'm going to make sure I relax the film into the mouth right here. So here you can see very important that I'm going to actually just pull the material and make sure it rotates 100% with no tension past that upper ridge. So here you can see some fingers on the outside edge. So what I'm doing now is I'm pulling the material pretty hard just to make sure that all those wrinkles go on the inside portion of that lip. Very important that all those wrinkles go on the inside, which you'll see why in a little bit. So now that the material is kind of shifting on the inside, my free hand is just constantly tweaking the material, pulling, my other hand is sealing it right on the edge and just being extra thorough here. This is what I call a 360 degree check over. And this transition is very important. I'm not using heat yet. I don't want to trigger the memory yet. So very important to do this cold. But once I feel like everything is right at the edge, I'm going to relax the material in terms of pulling it away from the mirror so it's not touching anything that has a high surface energy. And once I feel like everything is just kind of nice and loose and everything is in the right position, now it's time to come in with heat and just super relax it. So right now I'm going to start at one point and you'll see the material really start to kind of shrink back. But what it's doing now, in my opinion, is, is when it shrinks back, it's actually feeding those mounts, which is really interesting. So even though there's a ton of wrinkles in there, this is actually a very, very hungry mouth area with severe, severe curves inside. So basically by having a lot of wrinkles in there and then shifting the tension with heat, now I'm actually kind of almost ahead of the eight ball in the sense that now the material is nice and relaxed. It shrank where I wanted it to shrink. And now watch this. Now I'm going to pick up the material and with my free hand and my thumb right now, I can actually feed the material right into that mouth like area. So, and actually you'll be surprised and you know, obviously I could see it much closer in person, but you can even see it on this camera right now is that you can see right now, you can see the material went into that mouth with almost zero wrinkles. And that's because I'm feeding that area. So this is uh, that technique that I've been pushing on the Rap Institute as of, you know, say April of 2019, did a proper video at the beginning of 2020, where I'm really pushing that feed the mouth logic. As soon as I see these areas as a mouth, and before I used to call them scoops or pockets, I used to kind of push the material away from there or it actually just kind of not even go inside there because I felt like, oh my God, there's no way to wrap inside there. But the more I realized that those areas want wrinkles and by going away from the compound curves, which is what I did from the outside, I'm actually feeding the mouth area. So I fed the mouth at the bottom of the mirror, but now here by taking all the tension from the outside of the mirror and pulling it to this inside portion, I'm actually feeding this mouth-like area as well. So I'm taking the material much deeper than I used to and it's funny after wrapping cars for let's say 22 years and always thinking of these areas as really difficult to wrap or you're going to overstretch them and by simply just changing my perspective or in this case just changing an allergy call it instead of calling it a scoop or a pocket all of a sudden just called it a mouth and all of a sudden i just start seeing these areas differently and i'm approaching car wrapping much much different there's a video that's going to go on the wrap institute it's called the circle of wrinkles It's a bumper technique that i came up with and now i'm wrapping bumpers completely different than i used to before i used to wrap bumpers kind of 50 50 logic and now it's almost 0 100 which if you definitely check out that video on the wrap institute and again it's called circle of wrinkles for bumpers and it really just is interesting now how just changing the analogy will change your approach with wrapping cars back to this mirror is right near i got that overlap making sure everything's nice and clean and this overlap is going to be about i would say about an eighth of an inch it doesn't have to be too much just as long as the surface was prepped and degreased right now so i got the material set and i make my cut nice and clean if you're not comfortable cutting on the car put let's say a liner underneath there or knifeless tape but now the upper portion right there see that left i give it a kiss of heat and here just by focusing on that mouth like area watch how far i can take the film in there's a natural body break inside there about a quarter inch and by hitting that upper portion now making a tiny little relief cut so it scoops i can now take that material super super deep right in that upper edge so by picking the material up feeding it right into the side it's nice and relaxed so before you know i used to think that was a dog fight and now it's actually the more wrinkles that area has the easier the material just slides in that gap with no wrinkles and now i'm just confident about cutting right to the edge now because i've already relaxed it with heat beforehand and now it just cuts flush right to the edge nice full coverage right there and as i pick the material up i don't see any fingering i don't feel any tension in the film at all so this is really really cool to wrap that in one piece especially by wrapping the complicated compound curves on the outside and to be able to take it this deep inside the mirror with no tension it's just really really good feeling so you feel like you know before i used to push it on the wrap institute try to avoid wrapping things in one piece but now i'm actually like you know what wrap it in one piece because you start to see the mouth so by going away from the compound curves you're feeding the mouth. It's a big win-win situation. So obviously here, use knifeless tape if you're not comfortable cutting on the car. Super light touch right now, making it nice and symmetrical. So when the overlay piece goes on, it's going to hold for the long term. But 
got really deep around this edge so it's going to look gray from the outside and come back and put a piece of black. In this case, it's going to be mold and hold. And if you watch the Rep Institute, there's a video of me wrapping a chrome mirror, this exact same mirror in purple chrome. And the idea was it took knifeless tape and cut it on the outside edge and then took a big piece of satin black that was really quite thick that wrapped inside this entire area so it covered the yellow completely. So keep in mind that if this was for a live client right now, I would definitely go with a longer piece, but I think the mold and hold just definitely tells a good story here. We're just forming around this gap right now, taking my time, keeping the liner on as much as possible so the line stays super straight, and just basically overlapping the gray by about an eighth of an inch. Don't have to do it too much because I want to get nice, good depth with the black. Push the mirror in towards that uh, inside portion now so I can get have access to this area here. And once I get the mold and hold nice and secure right now, once I get it deep enough, I'm going to rotate the mirror so I can feed the other side. So I always try to shift that mirror to get more coverage. And you can see just feeding inside that gap nice and clean. Don't have to use any heat. Just take my time, scoop it in that area once it's nice and complete. Push the mirror to the inside now on this section and then keep on going with the mold and hold. So start at one point, loop it around, and the overlap for the mold and hold is gonna go exactly on the overlap for the gray. So always try to have those layered on top so it looks nice and clean. Come back with the heat, double check for bubbles, make sure all the edges are down nice and clean, and you can see a perfect matte finish with that pre-stretch and shifting away from the corners and feeding the mouth. Always add heat just to kind of get that adhesive flow, and don't think you need a post-heat in this case because I don't think the material is taken past 10% because it was triggered, the memory is triggered to take it back to zero, and fitting the mouth and everything's nice and good. You got nice good coverage inside there, nice good mold and hold on the inside so it looks black like a shadow super clean and tight so technically this is a nice good one piece mirror with super deep coverage but no fingers and tension on the outside edge which is critical and you got that nice good paint like finish so if you have a customer who wants a paint like finish you got this as a result and if you really want to kind of feed that yellow and i talked earlier about just do a bigger piece of black but you get the whole point of having the right techniques combining shimmy pre-stretch triangles and feeding the mouth and you can get a mirror like this so it's combining all those techniques and hope this helps you wrap these areas better and faster which is super cool stuff thanks for watching justin payton